Hello guys, the topic that we are going to see today is Android version history, APIs and SDK version. So the version history of the Android mobile operating system began with the public release of the Android beta on November 5 of 2007. Then the first commercial version, Android 1.0, was released on September 23rd of 2008. Afterwards, Android was continually developed by Google and the Open Handset Alliance and it has seen a number of updates to its base operating system since the initial release. Android versions such as Android 1.0 and 1.1 were not released under any specific code names, although Android 1.0 uh, and 1.1 was officially known as Astro Boy and Bender. Yes, indeed, they were known as Astro Boy and Bender. Afterwards, the Android code names were confectionery themed. Okay, so by confectionery, I mean that it's uh, relating to sweets or chocolates. And they have been in alphabetical order since 2009's Android 1.5 version, which is also known as Cupcake. The most re recent version of Android is Android 11, which is also known as R. And this was released in September of 2020. Now, what is API level? So, API level is an integer value that uniquely identifies the framework API offered by a version of the Android platform. So, there are many different versions of Android. So, basically, uh, the integer value which uniquely identifies this framework API is our API level. So these API levels are also known as SDK versions. So the Android platform provides a framework API that applications use to interact with the underlying Android system. The framework API may consist of a core set of packages and classes, a set of XML elements and attributes for declaring a manifest file, also for declaring and accessing uh, resources. It also contains a set of intents and a set of permissions that applications can request as well as permission enforcements included in the system. Now let us look at the Android version numbers with its name and its corresponding API level. So as we have already uh, mentioned, as I have already mentioned that uh, for Android 1.0 and 1.1 it had no official code name but unofficial names were Astro Boy and Bender, right? And the API levels of this Astro Boy and Bender were API 1 and API 2, okay? Then afterwards, this Astro Boy and Bender, we have Cupcake. And from this Cupcake to this Pi, okay? From this Cupcake to this Pi, their uh, naming convention was confectionery themed, okay? So as you can see, it's Cupcake, Donut, Eclair, Froyo, Gingerbread, Honeycomb, and it goes on, right? Then afterwards, uh, this confectionery uh, naming convention was ended and uh, it, the naming convention was now uh, made numerical like Android 10 and Android 11. And they are also known as Q and R as well. Okay, So as you can see on the uh, right hand side here, the API level corresponds to the Android version names. right? So the latest Android uh, version that we have is Android version number 11. It is also known as R or Android 11 and the API level is 30. Okay, so the Android versions, as you can see, each of the successive versions are undergoing through API levels. And in this API levels, the difference is newer updates are coming, newer features are being added. Uh, let's dig deeper into this. Okay. So uh, the next topic that we're going to see is the application forward compatibility. Okay. So each uh, successive version of the Android platform can include updates to the Android application. Okay, so just I have uh, mentioned now that each of the successive version of the Android uh, platform will have updates. Okay, and these updates are the Android application framework API. Okay? So these updates are also known as OTA or over the air updates. Right, so afterwards, uh, the updates to the framework API are designed in such a way so that the new API remains compatible with the earlier versions of the API. Okay, 
So most changes in the API are additive and introduce a new replacement functionality. So as parts of the API are upgraded, the older replaced parts are deprecated, but they are not removed. Okay. So you should keep in mind that in each update, okay, the uh, older parts or the uh, older features they are not removed, rather they are deprecated or replaced. Okay. Now all the API parts from earlier revisions are carried forward without modification. So if, uh, for example, uh, an application running on API level 30 can run on higher level APIs if an OTA update takes place, right? So for example, uh, we have seen here an example that if my application runs on API level 30, then it can run on higher level APIs. So this is the application forward compatibility. Similarly, if we take an API of level, say, uh, 15, right? API of level 15. So in this API of level 15, what will happen is if uh, if our device gets an update, right? So and now our device is uh, say it contains an API of 16. So what will happen? The features that were used in this API, API 15, will be carried on to this API 16 API as well. So my device, which was previously 15, now it is 16, but the, uh, my application is 15, right? It has not changed to 16, but still it can be used in API 16. So this is my application forward compatibility. Now moving on to the next part, which is our application backward compatibility. Now Android applications are not necessarily backward compatible. Okay? They are not backward compatible with the versions of Android platform older than the version against which were compiled, against which they were compiled or tested. Now, each new version of the Android platform can include new uh, framework APIs, such as they can also include new platform capabilities and features, right? So, if my application is, say, for example, running on this new version, okay, and this uh, new version uh, will have certain new framework APIs, right? So, that application of mine will be having this platform capabilities and features. Now, now you can say that the earlier versions of the platform they did not have this new framework apis or they did not include this platform capabilities or features so my application won't be running on those platforms okay or those earlier versions of the platforms okay so for example uh, you can take that an application which is running on api level 30 may have some features which are absent in api level 15 thus this application can't be run on platforms with API level 15 or below. So in Android, the application backward compatibility is not necessarily present. Now let us move on to the uh, SDK versions. Okay, so applications can use a manifest element provided by the framework API, okay, uh, which is users SDK, right? As you can see here, the framework API is the users SDK and this is the syntax. So uh, it describes the minimum and maximum api levels okay so the applications or apps can use a manifest element to describe the, the maximum and the minimum api levels okay under which they are able to run as well as the uh, the preferred api level they are designed to support so the manifest element offers up to three key attributes okay first one is the minimum sdk version Okay, which specifies the minimum API level on which my application is able to run. So the default uh, value is one, it is set as one. And then we have the target SDK version, which specifies the API level on which the application is designed to run. Okay. Then we have the maximum SDK version. It specifies the maximum API level on which my ac uh, application is able to run. So this feature is not used or declared nowadays. Okay. So this Android Max SDK version, nowadays it's not declared. We will see why it's not declared. Okay, now let us look at the SDK version relationship, okay? The relationship between my mean SDK, minimum SDK, maximum SDK, and the target SDK, okay? So for instance, if uh, for my application, the minimum SDK is set to API 12, okay? So devices with less than API 12 won't be able to run this application, okay? So minimum SDK is defining the uh, threshold for which my application can run. Okay, so beyond uh, below this threshold, the applications won't be running on the devices. 
this SDK, as I have already mentioned uh, before, is set to 1 by default. So it is always necessary for us to declare this, okay? So we will declare this according to our preference. Now moving on to uh, the maximum SDK, if say, in my application, the maximum SDK is set to API 5, okay? Now if this application is installed in a device which has an API more than 5, then that device won't be able to run the application. So maximum SDK basically is another threshold for maximum uh, value of my API, right? So if, say for example, if a device with API 5 uh, is running this application, okay, but it receives an OTA, that is a over the air update, and now the API of the device is updated to API 6, then what will happen? Then the system of the device will automatically remove this app, okay, automatically remove this application from the device. So if my uh, threshold is uh, passed, right, so for my device, if the max API is higher than the max SDK for the application, then my device cannot run the application, okay. So if we declare this max SDK, it potentially stops the applications from running. That is why we shouldn't declare the max SDK, right. Now uh, for our target SDK, say for an application, if my target SDK is set to API 25, then a device with API 25 or lower can run the application. Okay? So basically target SDK, it sets the limit to which uh, my application is set tested okay? or compiled. However, if my device receives an OTA okay? uh, and it is updated to API 26, before it was API 25, now my device is updated to API 26 after it received an OTA update. Even then, this application, okay, who has, uh, which has a target SDK of API 25, can run on this device, okay. So previously, I have told you about the forward compatibility. So the forward compatibility is happening here. So what target SDK does is it takes advantage of the forward uh, compatibility. We know that in my forward compatibility, all the features in API 25 will also exist in API 26, right? That is why the application which was built on API 25, okay, can still run on API 26. So that is my target SDK for you. Okay, so now let us move on to the selecting the SDK version or the API level. So how should we select our uh, SDK versions? Okay, so the minimum target and max SDK version. So as I've already mentioned before that we should we should obviously declare our minimum and target SDK but we should not declare our maximum SDK since it has the potential to remove the application from our device if the device receives an update. Now the minimum SDK can be uh, determined through some key factors. Okay? So the lowest possible version of the platform that my application can support okay, that should be my minimum SDK. But if we want to build an application that uses the new features okay, uh, of my latest platform version, then I should set my minimum SDK to the API level of the latest platform version. So you can set your minimum SDK in two ways. You can set it the lowest possible version, Android version that my application can support, or I can set it to the latest uh, Android version in order to access the features. Okay. Now my target SDK should always be set to the highest possible version okay, so that it can access all the new features. Now, the, now if we move on to the testing part, my application should be tested or compiled against every API level starting from the minimum SDK to the target SDK. Okay? But by default, it is set to be compiled against the target SDK. Now we can derive a relationship from the minimum target and compile SDK. So the minimum SDK should be the lowest possible. The target SDK should be the latest SDK and the target SDK should always be greater than or equal to the minimum SDK and the compile SDK okay, should always be uh, great, uh, equal to or greater than the target SDK. Right. So my compilation is always set to the target SDK by default. Okay. You should remember that and for uh, practical reasons, we should always test our application starting from the minimum to the target. Okay? But when we are actually building an application, 
what happens is the compilation of that app is uh, actually uh, set to be tested by the target or the compile SDK okay and the target and the compile SDK in that position is the same okay so let, now let us take a look at the code in which we will find this minimum target and compile SDK okay so uh, this is the code that I have showed uh, you previously in our lab okay now if you uh, go to build.gradle double click on it then you can uh, go to the gradle script and now you can see in here you have the compile SDK version which is set to 30 and this is similar to the target SDK version which is 30 you can change this compile SDK version and give it some value say uh, 23 24 25 like that okay since my minimum SDK version here I have set it to 23 so this application won't be running on devices which have the minimum SDK version which have uh, API level lower than 23 okay now this application since it has a target SDK version of 30 now if say uh, in future uh, API level of 31 comes even then this application will be running on API 31 that that is our forward compatibility the application forward compatibility okay so what you will do is if you want to change any of this value you can go to build.gradle okay click it twice and then you can change this value after you change this value say i want to make this value as 29 okay then you will find an option to uh, sync and then after you hit sync now then your gradle files will uh, automatically sync and download the files which are necessary to make the compilation possible okay so let's change it back to previously what it was and see yeah, the sync is not there now. Thank you. This will be all for today. Hopefully you have enjoyed this class.